What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Wizards of Amazon podcast, where we cover all things private label. My name is Carlos Alvarez, and I'll be your host for this show. Uh, today, we have a special guest who's a longtime friend of mine, and I'd say one of the one of the toughest hustlers that I know as far as uh, an entrepreneur and somebody I respect a lot, Galena Parker. Galena, what's up? Hey, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, good to talk to you as, as usual. Yes, it's been a while. I know you uh, You just, uh, you had your, 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 a different type of private label product. Like I like to refer to my son, who hopefully we can do this podcast before she uh, decides to get involved in the podcast. But um, thank you for taking time and your busy schedule to be on the show. Um, Galina, for people, listeners on this show that have not heard of you, which is probably strange if they haven't, but if they have not, can you tell uh, the listeners a bit about you, like your origins, and how you connect with Amazon and get to where you are today. Sure. Uh, so I have been selling on Amazon for about five years and a um, couple more years before that was eBay. And uh, um, I'm originally from Ukraine. And uh, my right now my uh, primary source and model is wholesale. However, I went through um, everything, RA, uh, online arbitrage, wholesale and I even have some private label products right now. Uh, so I also run a couple of websites uh, and one is onlinebuylist.com. Uh, we have uh, a team of VE which help other Amazon sellers in different things like reimbursements and online arbitrage sourcing and wholesale sourcing. And we also just launched a new tool. It's called Seller Toolset and um, it has um, different modules like for sourcing products and for um, feedback feedback monitoring, and uh, it also has a free Chrome extension which allows um, helps to source products. Um, doesn't matter which model you're in, RA, I mean um, OA or wholesale or private label, just gives you all of the information about the product um, that you can see, and it's free. So check it out. Um, yeah, any other questions? about me yeah so you got you got started doing wholesale or arbitrage what were you doing before amazon uh so before before amazon my um i was working as a project manager in the uh seller phone service company mm -hmm. um that was back when um there was practically no smartphones as it there were the phones were bar phones and in order to get a little pretty picture on your phone you had to do certain things like send text message and stuff like that. So that was what I was doing before the e-commerce world. Okay. And I know when we were setting up for this show, because you you're, you're on my short list of someone that I was just, I must have Galena on the show. The, there was a lot of topics we could have gone with again, like seller tool set, um, online buy list. It, one of the things we spoke about, and I, when you said it, I recalled conversations we had previously about it. And I, I refer to it as white label. I think you refer to it as something else. And uh, right when we were talking a little bit before the show, it kind of sounded like private label without the manufacturing. Um, that, that's the topic I really want listeners and everybody to hear. And I actually want to hear some of the details that I haven't had an opportunity to hear about that yet. Can you talk about that? Like what is white labeling or private labeling without the manufacturing? Right. So, uh, well, I was selling wholesale uh, the, and I was, kind of reading here and there about private label, but I wasn't really getting into that. Uh, there was just certain things that um, I uh, discovered kind of with the trial and error. So for example, uh, I was selling this product and it was a um, product for, uh, from not a very well-known brand. So, but it was like selling really well. And uh, it was pretty basic product as far as, far as manufacturing process concerned. So, and I thought, well, if people are buying this product for me that I bought wholesale from this company that nobody heard of, they're probably searching for this product, not by typing in like Under Armour um, garlic press or Nike. They're probably just typing in garlic press and um, somehow finding this product. And uh, I thought, well, what the heck, I'm just going to try to source this product and um and uh, you know, put in a mark and see what goes. So this uh, and this worked. And uh, this is this is not exactly the example of the 
white label, but this is kind of like example of how I use my wholesale knowledge into bringing product to market, um, which I, I did not do any other research besides the, my own sales that I had. Um, so, so let me, let me see. So let me see so far so we can break this up. So mm -hmm. at this point you have a wholesale vendor, you're mm -hmm. reselling the product successfully or, or at a rate that you're, you find acceptable, but the brand is not a household name brand or something that's very right. popular that a lot of people would have. And maybe, maybe you were even the only seller or uh, reseller on that listing. Is that fair? There was a couple other sellers. Um, okay. And if this product is not something that is completely not competitive either, there are other sellers selling um, similar products as well. But um, this one was selling also pretty pretty good. Okay, so you 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 had this product; it's going pretty good, and you decided I'm going to source this product. Did you immediately think, "Let me go to this vendor," or did you explore perhaps could I get it in China for this or the typical route that somebody goes through when deciding to source a product? Right. So that's a good question because prior that I manufactured my own, uh, I actually went to vendor and asked them, Hey, can I make this product, um, in a different color? But when I ordered from you, can you give me exclusivity for this color? Uh, meaning exclusivity on Amazon. Sure. And, uh, they said, sure. And, uh, there were minimums involved though. So I was, I needed to buy, um, I think 1000 units. And, um, and the whole process again involved waiting three or four months because they manufacture it and ship it by boat. Um, however, I was not involved into freight and freight forwarding and all of that stuff. So I was just, uh, I placed 30%, I believe, deposit. And then in three months, my product, uh, my custom variation arrived and, uh, we put it as a variation to this, um, existing listing and, it was selling. Um, it was selling well um, just by having you know rank already with the parent variation and uh, reviews. Um, so it's all connected, and just people had more choices now to buy. Oh, wow! Different okay. so, so you you approached them. They were immediately open to it because you didn't really mention like, "Hey, I'm going to create a brand off your product. Can you just manufacture it for me?" You asked them about having a variation of this and exclusivity, right. like maybe it was a garlic press and you wanted it. Uh, right. Yeah. This, this was my first, uh, first step basically. Next they decided I'm going to source my own product. Right, and I, then I, I, I'm curious, there's a popular MOQ level um, for a lot of products at 2000 units, but you mentioned 1000. Do you think that had you attempted to source this on your own, your MOQ would have been higher? But because you were working with someone that had, you know, uh, an, an open relationship with their factory, they were able to get that, that variation color at 1000. Um, I guess, um, yeah, I think 1000 was the quantity and, um, they didn't want to do the less so. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, I forgot. I think, yeah, I'm trying to remember. When I sourced it, it was 2000. Right. So yeah, I guess it was smaller from the company. Yeah. That's a, that's a, like an indirect uh, advantage there from, from doing it that way because they, they're already placing orders. Also, I'm curious when you, when you place the order, did they charge you extra for a, any of the associated fees or shipping fees to bring a product into the country or it piggybacked no, it, with your merchandise? Uh, I was basically paying the same price slightly less than I would pay to buy wholesale from them. And also I was able to work in other things like, so this is like a pack of two, for example, and technically, you know, you had to put it together and, you know, I also needed to have my own barcode. Um, so they would do that for me. So the product when it arrives from factory ready for me to, put the UPS label on and ship it to Amazon. That's so amazing. I didn't have to do the packing unlike when I bought wholesale. So. That's absolutely amazing. Okay. So that was your first attempt at, at not attempt. Is that product still going? Yeah. I, this is like third year. I think I'm reordering this variation. 
Mm -hmm. And you had the order size has gone up. I'm curious about how, how successful it's been. Have you had to defend the listing against hijackers who somehow got a hold of that color when they shouldn't have? So for, yeah, I had, um, I don't think I can call them hijackers. I think there was just sellers who didn't know what they're doing, but also the vendor that I worked, worked with, they were very, um, happy to work with me. Like if I would call them and say, Hey, here's this guy selling my variation have you sold it to him? And they would say, no, we haven't. And let us give us, what's the name of the seller? And I would say, so such and such. And they would say, let us give them a call and tell them that they're selling wrong variation. And then they would. And then in a couple of days, the competitor um, will be gone. Besides, there were um, situation when I was, uh, I ordered it from them. I thought maybe somehow they got my variation, but they had, different variation they just didn't list properly oh so they never really got a hold of the inventory because i assume no whatever you ordered was, you took possession of yeah yeah it was just a mistake i think from them and was and, the supplier um, open to send straight to fba huh was the supplier open to sending straight to fba or you took possession and sent it on your own i think they probably would but i just kind of maybe next year i will and also this is something that um I wanted to, I didn't want to ship everything because, you know, it was a couple months worth of stock, you know, I would ship it itself um, to avoid fees. Okay. Um, that makes sense. So what, what was the next progression of that? And, and, and did we not cover something there that may be something that was disappointing or any cons? Did you find any cons in that relationship? Um, it's been really good. Um, it's been really good. And also, now we have very good relationships with the supplier, you know, and yeah, three years. Um, if I, if so, for example, for example, he would, um, uh, they would receive this shipment and said, Hey, I cannot accept everything right now. Can you hold it in your warehouse for a couple months? Like I need only 50% right now. And they would say, yeah, no problem. And they wouldn't charge you because I know some, somebody would maybe charge you storage fee mm -hmm. or something. They wouldn't charge me anything. And they were willing to work with me and, um, yeah, it's been really good. And uh, if I were to want to have another variation created, different color, uh, that would not be a problem as well. Like I know I can work with them. And you haven't probably because there's really not an obvious color that would be a clear winner or I'm assuming it's um, a color. So, um, so like for the downside that you're still selling wholesale technically. Uh, it is your variation. However, there's other variations and then there is other sellers who get a hold of other variations. And technically you are still sort of competing with um, others. So, which is where um, I found it more comfortable to be with my own product. Um, so that was like my next step where I, um, Actually, I found the supplier. So this is like a clothing uh, niche product. I found the supplier Magic, uh, which is actually it's a very good place I would say to start if you if you source um, if you don't want to go to China yet or you cannot afford it or anything. Las Vegas um, trade shows, uh, very good place to start. So this one I found at Magic and was a Chinese supplier, and uh, yeah, and I made my own <laughs> product my own brand and everything my own logo okay and that one has been really good um even better than the wholesale because like i said wholesale i have to work with other sellers and stuff but but let, let's back up and how, how did why did you decide to go and create your own brand then and what did that look like is it the same supplier or a different one it's a different supplier um i don't know i just like i said i like the fact that the product sells and it's not a um, well-known brand and uh, and I all and I wanted to try this whole process of sourcing and everything anyway and uh, I kind of decided this is a good this might be a good place to start and if it's not gonna work well it's not gonna work I'm gonna lose I think initial was like five thousand dollars I'm gonna lose five thousand dollars and well and it's gonna be a lesson but uh, it worked, and since then I created other variations of color for that product uh, from the same supplier. And actually, when it was uh, actually um, really good, um, this supplier that made a sample for me, the sample I liked much better than what I had from wholesale suppliers. Their quality was also good, 
but this one was like especially special <laughs> like okay. i really like the details how they did it and um so i felt even more comfortable about my product um than you know the ones from supplier and, and how and how did it work when well i guess if you're if you're taking it over completely as your brand now and on amazon mm -hmm. it has your actual brand there's no issues then with using uh certain photos that meet certain branding standards like it would in the other one so if you wanted to take a a series of photos to have on the previous one you were talking about you'd kind of have to get those photos from them or did they give you license to really take your own oh uh, you're talking about my product or the well, go, variation going back to the variation um it's really a basic product there is not a lot that you can make in photo okay um I cannot even imagine, um, but we did what we could um, with that, that listing and we try to do even better with our listing because um, we didn't want to mess too much with the existing listing for the supplier. And uh, th this is extremely interesting because it seems like you're, you're able to take advantage of a lot of the pros of private label without uh, some of the cons, especially the the logistics side of it, the working with the factory, the developing the relationship, because this factory, I mean, this this company already has one. Um, do you yeah. ever have any communications with the factory that's making the product? No, no, because uh, the supplier takes the possession of a product and then they ship it to me. So I don't know the chain of supply from and do you, do you ever brand. have any concerns not, not that that i hear this happen to anyone but maybe just the controlling control freak side of me of what if this what if this what if this brand just decides you know they don't want to continue doing this and you don't have connection with the factory has that ever been a concern for you you mean for the variation sure well if the brand doesn't want me to sell it doesn't matter if I have a factor or not because I cannot sell their No, no, no. I'm, I'm, talking about your, I'm talking about your private label, not the variation. Oh, uh, well, that's my factory that I found. That oh, okay. doesn't have to do with a, with a supplier. Okay, so that I'm misunderstanding. It's a different factory. Okay, so I'm misunderstanding this. I'm assuming that the second factory where you did your own private label of, that they had an existing product and you just asked yeah. them to manufacture that product for you so that you could put yeah. under your own brand. Yeah, and it has nothing to do about with the uh, other supplier. It was just like Correct. an idea, the the idea that I got from um, my wholesaler, essentially, that of a product, and then I sourced it myself from my own from my own ways, the different factory. Okay, and what move, moving forward is this something that you consider uh, putting a lot more resources into and fleshing out and taking advantage of that type of relationship, or like white labeling, or or no? Yeah, I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely always looking out for like, I see what, if something sells um, well, and I, and this is probably not because the brand, I always try to find those products and see if there is an opportunity um, to get this. What, so what's, your, this what, what's your process for that? Um, it's just at first it's just uh when you well it's if it's a new supplier you just see how start how the products start selling and if you see that there is a certain decent sales volume but sometimes but sometimes you like you feel like other you have to share your buy box or maybe you're not as comfortable or maybe the sales volume is good and you feel there is more room in the market that you can fit in another product this is you know what i start thinking that start researching you know um it's it's not exactly how probably how you guys do it sure. because you know you follow different process but i basically look at my existing sales existing sales and see what's comfortable basically and the first thing what i would do which i I, I'm working on several other products, um, projects right now that if I see that something sells, I would, I reach out to the company and say, Hey, can you make me, uh, this product with my own brand? 
and they would say yes or no and usually you they say yes everybody wants to sell your stuff they just you know need to change the box it's perfect <laughs> and uh, they would tell you the price sometimes the price would be cheaper than what you buy at wholesale but uh, oftentimes it's actually the same so now then it's your decision whether you have enough margin to do the marketing um mm -hmm. you know yourself but yeah i just always try to look for products like that and why and why not well, i'm trying to think let's say it's a holding it up no one's going to see this on the podcast but like a, a plastic disposable food bowl and you're you're buying that from a vendor and you're successfully selling it why mm -hmm. why approach them and ask them if they can do it instead of sourcing this bowl if you source it you're going to get it at say a manufacturer level cost versus the wholesale cost are there certain things you look at in that that make uh the way you're approaching it more favorable so um i guess it's a matter of minimum order quantity mm -hmm. and also it's a matter of that it's just so easy to approach existing company that you work with and again if it's a uh, the product that is manufactured in the united states mostly then it's probably your best bet to try your existing supplier anyway but also like if i could get if i could order i don't know one 200 i don't know depends like 400 units and i would make it in the united states let's say or whatever an existing supplier basically more expensive than um one source myself then maybe i can try it out you know more safer as opposed to going all in to the new supplier that i don't know their quality i don't know how reliable they are i don't know if they're going to disappear with my money i don't know how much it's going to cost me um i don't know how much the um time the freight would reach me and like just there's just no trust yet between you two so maybe if i can at least try to source it with existing then um maybe i can try it out before doing the the full-on manufacturer search for um different you know then i don't know there's other things you know better then if there is mold involved and um you'd have to get prepare mold or you have to ship them samples it's just all long right long well, time well, whereas with the with the with the company you're dealing with, they, they have the molds as long as the product you want them to make for you is identical, except maybe right. your, your brand boxing. Right. Right. Okay. That makes sense. What, what would you tell anybody that again, for, for lack of a better description, white labeling or PL without the manufacturer involved, what, what would you suggest to somebody that was excited to hear this? You know, they wanted to get into private label and they maybe see this as a, as a stepping stone, to going the the typical route uh, that everyone else talks about, what would you advise them to maybe watch out for, or or anything? Um, I suggest um, first thing to do is to review your existing um, products that you sell that you resell, and uh, if you see there could be some opportunity that you can join in with your variation, maybe you see. Sometimes when you sell the same products all the time, you just start seeing them in a completely different, um, you know, way. You just uh, start seeing opportunities. So if you see there is an, an opportunity for um, red garlic press or whatever, just don't reach out to your supplier and ask if they're willing to um, to make one for you that you're gonna sell on Amazon. I I always upfront with suppliers that say hey i would like to sell it on amazon and i would like you know to make the listing really good and can you sell it to me but don't sell it to amazon other amazon sellers and um, they're usually pretty open so just look for your existing opportunities first and then and then if you see that there is you know still a little bit more place in the market and you can squeeze in your own product um you're gonna feel already more comfortable with your variation um you know launched your own product okay yeah that that, that makes total sense um i think a lot of people are going to get value from that uh, i want to be respectful of your time i know you have a million things going on for um anyone that's in the in the beginning you mentioned 
you know, about seller tool set, um, about online buy list. If anyone wants to get a hold of you for any of those services or to, to use the, uh, that tool or just get a hold of you to talk about what you spoke about on this podcast, what's the best way to reach you? Sure. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook. I guess is the best way to message me. Um, and uh, yeah, I hang out at Wizards of Amazon group. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can tag me there. I'm always there. And uh, yeah. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, either search for Galena on Facebook or tag her in the Wizards of Amazon Facebook group. She's definitely there. She's uh, one of the founding members. So okay. Galena, thank you so much for your time. I thank appreciate you, for you coming me. on with your busy schedule. Um, be good. Thank you. Bye. Liked what you heard and want to stay connected? Join our Facebook group or find me anywhere on social media at Wizards of Amazon or text the word Amazon to 69922. 